I'm looking again today at my electronic DC load, the Arduino based load circuit and it's not moved on since the last video uh, but I have been giving it some more thought and I think I've identified that in my design there's a possibility of a few issues. So my first issue is over the value of this resistor. I chose a 0.47 ohm resistor and I'm slightly concerned that that won't have enough resistance to see a reasonable voltage drop from this point here to this point here so that Arduino can accurately calculate the current going through the circuit. And of course I also th need to look at protecting the Arduino because if I put voltages higher than 5 volts here from my PSU um, the value here is certainly going to be over 5 volts and this one's likely to be as well so I'm going to have to create a voltage divider at this point to protect the Arduino and of course that also will reduce the accuracy of the measurement let me explain a bit further so when we're measuring within the sort of 5 volt standard Arduino range um, we can measure up to 1024 steps so 5 volts divided by 1024 steps is 0.004 volts per step so we get a reasonably accurate reading however if we look at 15 volts over the same amount of steps then we're looking at 0.014 volts per step so therefore the accuracy of measurement is lower especially at the lower values that said though I'm going to carry on with the existing resistor and see where it gets me and perhaps once I've completed the build I'll look at changing that for something a little more suitable and the other thing I've been thinking about is the MOSFET and I need to build something into the code to ensure that this never goes fully on because if this effectively becomes a short from this point to this point the only resistance in the load is that shunt resistor and I was doing some maths and at 5 volts with only 0.47 ohm resistance in there this circuit could pull over 10 amps and if it was 15 volts over 30 amps now the other thing I need to be conscious of is the fact that this MOSFET is physically attached to this heatsink but also electrically attached the uh, drain pin here in the centre is also connected to this tab so the drain of the MOSFET is connected here so I could potentially short out this circuit entirely and short my power supply or battery that I'm testing from the positive to the heat sink so I need to be conscious of that or I need to insulate it now I do have some of these small uh, heat sinks that you can buy and that does have some um, some thermal insulation there and a screw and a plastic isolator um, but unfortunately I think that's too small for my MOSFET into this heatsink but as long as I'm careful it should be okay and I think the final issue is more about redesign I was looking to put the circuit board in here with the USB connector at the top um, but using these header pins unfortunately means there's not really enough room to also get the screen in above and close the case properly so I think I need to redesign this so this is the alternative um, I've basically just put the pins of the Arduino Nano upside down which gives me enough to solder in at the bottom and also allows me to connect some cables at the top if I needed to so I'm just going to go straight to the board and there's enough space under there I think that should work fine 
The only thing I will need to do is take some out of the corner here at the top and the bottom for these screw posts. So I've cut some holes in the board here and I've also filed down both the edges at the side and it seems to fit in quite nicely now. I've also cut back these extra bits of plastic here so that I can get it really tight and flush and hopefully the USB connector should just peep out the side a little bit, plenty enough to get the cable plugged in. So the Nano's uh, soldered onto the board there and the board's fitting quite nicely inside the case. I've drilled a hole at the side uh, for the USB connector and that seems to be okay. It's not the neatest hole but it works. Um, these resistors are going to be my voltage divider. I've got a 100k and a 47k uh, resistors, 1% they are, um, and that should give me uh, a reading of up to, I think it's 15.6 volts, um, brought down to 5 volts for the Arduino, so as long as I keep this constant current load under 15 volts, that should be uh, fine. So there are my resistors um, for the voltage divider, this is going to be where the common ground goes, so they're right next to that point there. Um, the 47Ks, the 100Ks, they'll attach down here with the different voltage sensors at the either side of the resistor. And we're actually going into analog 6 and analog 7. So I've also made this button assembly here, uh, just on another bit of perf board. Um, it's all sharing a common ground, so four buttons all sharing a common ground. Um, so we only need five wires. And I'm going to use the internal pull-up resistors uh, on the Arduino so that when these are pressed um, they will actually go low rather than high. And I've just used an old uh, hard drive cable, the old type with the slightly thicker wire on it. So hopefully that will be okay. And I've put them right next to each other because I might be able to just fit in soft um, commands possibly, I don't know, I've not really thought too much about the code as yet, uh, but they just about fit in so you could just about line up with some menu items. And due to space I think I'll do the same thing here as well, I'll use eight cores of this cable and wire it straight into the board so there's no pins and headers on the back, I think that might be uh, best for the amount of space I've got. Now that I've got cables connected to my 5110 screen and these four buttons, I need to think a little bit about the digital uh, I.O. on the uh, Arduino here. The 5110 screen, um, for data at least, is going to require reset, C, D, C, DIN, clock. Uh, so what's that? Five pins. We then need VCC, which is actually 3.3 volts on these um, screens. And the light and the ground, well I think you ground the light pin to put the light on, so I might just connect those together. So we do need um, five data pins, a power pin and the ground pin. And also we need four for the buttons, but one of the things I'd like to do, which I haven't done before, is have one of these buttons as a go and stop button, and therefore it will need to be an interrupt button, and interrupt on uh, the Arduino Nano are on D2 and D3, so I'm going to have to use my buttons probably for D2, D3, D4, D5 and then my 5110 screen using pins higher up than that. And with a bit of soldering the buttons are connected uh, we've got D2, D3, D4 and D5 and a uh, fairly neat little solder job hopefully. Well, the measuring might not be perfect, but the screen does fit in there, as do the buttons. It's a little bit rough and ready, but it will certainly serve the purpose. All I need to do now is put a bit of hot glue on the back of these to hold them in, and I think we're almost ready to power this up.
So the screen and the buttons are hot glued in now, hopefully that will be strong enough. Uh, the only thing left now is the sensing wires and the shared ground and of course the uh, MOSFET gate. Um, so I'll uh, start soldering those in. So the wiring is complete. Um, you can see there the red and the yellow go into the voltage dividers at the bottom. The green goes to the uh, it's on D11, uh, which was the last PWM pin I had spare. That's lucky, isn't it? And the shared ground goes in here. The screen's complete with the buttons and dried, and uh, it's all ready to go together. Um, we just need to think about the code. But to be honest, I think that's for another video now. So join me in part three, where I'll look at the code, and hopefully I'll get this DC electronic load up and running. Please subscribe, comment and rate, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.